Welcome to the FoxT demo system for the Active Directory Bridge solution provided by Fox Technologies. In this simple scenario, we will show how simple it is to provision Active Directory users uh, to non-Windows systems. In this case, we have two Linux machines, C1 and C2, with the FoxT server control agent running on them. Uh, this agent provides the server-side authorization or authentication and authorization. We have the Fox Team Manager, which houses the master database, where user entries are created, host groups are created and managed, and of course, the all-important uh, security policies. The AD bridge can be set up during the installation of the Fox Team Manager or subsequently, and it is quite a simple procedure uh, using the CLI command set uh, that comes with the Fox Team Manager. The Fox Team Manager is joined to the Active Directory domain, so it will appear as a system in Active Directory domain uh, if you view your um, or manage your Active Directory through ADUC or any other utility, the M1 uh, system will be seen. Now, the next step is simply to create two groups on the FoxT side. In this case, one is a host group that will uh, house the Linux hosts and a user class. A user class is simply a group for, for users with the associated access routes. These are the security policies that determine where uh, users in that group can access um, systems uh, from a particular point, so source destination. Once those have been created using the CLI commands, we can export those two groups into Active Directory. They appear as two global security groups uh, without any members, so they are empty. They just simply have the prefix HG to uh, denote a host group and UC for a user class. They just appear as two security uh, groups, global groups, Active Directory groups. Now, when users are created in Active Directory, in this case, we will take user A as an example. Um, he's made a member of both of these groups that is then read across the AD bridge by the Fox team manager. And seeing that the user is in V1H1, it will now automatically provision them to those systems that also appear in V1H1 host group. So in this case, we have C1 and C2, the two Linux systems where this user will be uh, provisioned to. And he will also be part of the B1C1 user class. So any uh, associated access routes will apply immediately, or they can be further ones can be created later. So next step, user A is created in the master database, and according to the group membership, is provisioned to the two Linux systems C1, C2. So viewing those systems, we can see uh, we will see the um, home directories created and, of course, the local password files with the relevant entries. The next step here in this uh, example, we have already created a, um, a host group for the XP machine, W1H1, Windows host group, and associated access route. All this is linked to the user class B1C1 because user A is in that class and these will become the access routes. So in this access route, we are saying that W1H1, any system in W1H1 can access any system in B1H1. That is, in this case, C1 and C2, the two Linux systems can be accessed. Now, here we can also decide which method can be employed to access those um, systems. In this case, we will use PuTTY or SSH. The Second access route simply states that any system within this host group B1H1 can access any other system in the same group. So when the user logs on to the XP machine, gets authenticated by the Active Directory, uh, will get a Kerberos ticket, that user will now be able to log on using SSH to one of the Linux systems, in this case C1, and then using that Kerberos ticket and using the Active Directory credentials. So even when this user makes the initial SSH connection to C1, um, only the Active Directory credentials are being used. This user can then hop from C1 to C2. Similarly, this user can log on directly via SSH as the access method, according to the access route, to uh, from XP1 to C2, and then, of course, 
hop from C2 via SSH to C2. So that is the demo environment. A lot of the preliminaries have been already done. Um, and what we will show is a user logging in. And then we will create a new user for this demonstration. If we have a look at the um, FoxT GUI interface where the FoxT manager can be managed um, via this interface, let's have a look at the user administration. If we look at list user data, we can see quite a few users there. Um, user A, if we list, we can see all the settings for this user. So we know that he's part of the B1H1 group uh, where those two Linux systems are. Uh, that's um, also uh, Unix account um, parameters, uh, home directory, uh, shell, and other password parameters to manage this user. And most importantly, these are the access routes um, that have been assigned for this class. This user, if we scroll up, is part of the B1C1 user class, and the associated access routes for that class are also listed. If we look at the classes in more detail, or the access routes for that class, B1C1, user A is part of that class, but so therefore all these access routes will apply. In this case, we say that this user can SU to root, can go from any system within the W1H1, in this case we have the XP machine, to any system in B1H1, the two Linux systems using SSH. Also, in order to allow the user to hop from one Linux systems a system to the other, uh, we've allowed this user to use all the SSH um, uh, protocols and sub protocols to be able to log on uh, or hop from one Linux system to the other. So any system in B1H1, um, A to B. So these are the access routes. And the host group B1H1 simply has these two Linux machines um, as members. Now this is all done on the FoxT solution side. Uh, from the Active Directory side, we have this organizational unit, which was created here um, in ADUC. And then we have the two host groups, which appeared via the CLI command set from the Fox T side when they were created there and exported. They simply appear as two security groups, in this case, two universal security groups. We have the two Linux systems that have been joined to the domain. This is not essential, but if you wish to allow your users to be able to hop from one um, system to another, then you need to join this uh, to the domain in order to make use of the Kerberos ticket. So, and the users we have, in this case, we have these three users created. We have user A, and also on the computers, we can see that the master database or the Fox team manager is also joined to the system. And of course, ordinarily, as one would expect, the XP machine being part of the domain. So using user A, we will log on to the XP machine. To the AD domain. And with this user logged on, we can now start PuTTY and log on to the C1 Linux system. Here, important to remember, he only needs to log on using the Active Directory username, user A, and the user is now logged on. We do a host name. You can see this user is on C1. We do a K list, we can see the Kerberos ticket. So now the user should be able to hop on to C2. And there we have the user seamlessly logged on to the second Linux system. So basically, what we've shown after users have been created, they have been uh, provisioned out to the uh, Fox team manager uh, or created in the Fox team manager, which in turn provisions them out to the relevant systems. That user is then able to log in from their desktop uh, via the access method that's been allowed, in this case SSH, to either one of these Linux systems and jump from one to the other. In the next part, um, we'll show an actual creation of a user in Active Directory and then read that user into the Fox team manager and then provision that user out and then show the same process again.
So back at the Active Directory using ADUC, we will create a new user. We'll call this user test12, 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 next. And for the purposes of this demonstration, we won't bother with changing the passwords. We'll just disable that and say user cannot change password or password never expires. And we'll give a password. Next, finish. So we have the new user here. Double click on the user parameters. We now need to assign Unix attributes. These will be then provisioned out to those Linux systems. UID is automatically assigned and we can give select a GID and also make him a member of those two security groups. So he's now a member of those two security groups, which are twinned on the Fox T side, um, with the relevant information for this user now to be provisioned out. So we apply that, okay that. Let's just double check one of these groups. And we can see we have test 12 as a member. That's all that is really required on the Active Directory side, whether you do it directly on the Active Directory via this tool, Active Directory Users and Computers, or any other utility. However you uh, create and populate the Active Directory with users, uh, but from the Fox T side, it's simply read of the Active Directory bridge, and uh, that user or users will be provisioned out to those relevant systems. So going back to the XP machine, we have the new user now. Test 12, login. To the ID domain. There's a new user. Environment has, is being set up. We open PuTTY. As you can see, there's no sessions, saved sessions. So we will create one. C1. Local. And in order for Kerberos to be used from one system to the next, we need to enable this GSAPI credential delegation. So when we open this session, you can see that um, the SSH host key the user just needs to say yes, log in as test12, and the user has logged in successfully to C1. So now this user, because he's been a member, has been a part of that group, uh, and the access associated access routes should be able to log in to the second Linux machine. Again, the key authentication, yes. And the user simply logs in, host name. Showing how simple it is to create a new user, place them in the relevant groups, have those groups uh, read over the AD bridge uh, to the master database of the Fox team manager and then have that user provisioned out to the relevant systems according to the group membership of B1H1, in this case B1H1 with C1, C2 as members. And then that user simply logs on to their XP client desktop, authenticates via Active Directory as they would normally, and then according to the access routes and the access methods associated with that route, in this case we gave uh, the method SSH, or in this case putty shell SSH, to be able to access or connect to one of those systems. And that's really as simple as that.